Greetings and God's peace be with you. My name is Christopher Lynn Payne and I'm one of the co-rectors at St. Francis Episcopal Parish and Community Center. Uh, before we get started this, uh, the spiritual reflection for today, uh, I want to let you know that the topic we're going to discuss is one that is intense and can be really painful, uh, triggering for some. Uh, within uh, the book of Susanna, which is the text that we're going to focus on today, um, there uh, is an account of uh, a threat of, of sexual violence. And so uh, while I think m most of us know that this is, um, well, this is something, this is a plague on, uh, on our society, the world that we live in, sexual abuse and, and violence, uh, when, uh, you know, when we're surprised by it arising, it can be, uh, it can be even traumatic. So I just want to name that before we begin so that you can take care of yourselves in that. But it's a part of the text, and it is a, um, it's something that I think is important for us in the church to pay attention to in ways that can create uh, safeguards for people, in ways that uh, we can stand with those that are most vulnerable uh, in matters of justice. And that's actually what happens in this text. So uh, the, the text we're going to focus on is the book of Susanna, which actually is, is really a chapter. It's one chapter um, in, in the Bible that we read in the Episcopal Church. Uh, it's found in the Apocrypha, but um, in the, the um, uh, well, in the, the Hebrew Bible, uh, it's, it's found in the book of Daniel. Uh, so uh, it, it highlights uh, Daniel um, as it tells the story, and, um, and it also highlights some really of the worst behaviors that uh, we as humans do to one another. So I encourage you to read the text. There's a link included there, but I'm going to talk to you a little bit about um, uh, the story and some observations about it and invite you to make your own connections. Um, in the story, we hear about a man named Joachim who is married to a woman named Susanna. We know uh, who her father is. We know that they are people of wealth and prosperity. Um, they have influence. Uh, they live uh, in a compound with beautiful gardens. And we know that this is the, the place where the appointed judges come to uh, preside over people in matters of justice in their community. Uh, in the story, uh, we don't learn a lot about Susanna. Um, we, we know that she's beautiful, and we know that these two judges that come onto the property that belongs to her husband, and I make that distinction uh, because it's not her property. In fact, uh, in many ways, the way that she is uh, described, um, in effect, is as property of her husband as well. But she, uh, she's known to, uh, to bathe in their gardens, uh, in their private gardens. And so what we have is an account of these two judges, these two people that are put in power uh, to rule over uh, um, the, the conflicts that occur in their community. And these two men separately uh, have strong feelings of desire towards Susanna. Uh, they, uh, they discover that they both have that same desire and, uh, and then they plot. Uh, they plot to find a way to entrap her and uh, to be able to take advantage of her and in fact uh, force her to have uh, sex with them, an act of rape. So, uh, you know, as you read the text, you'll, you'll see the scene unfold. Um, they give her a choice, uh, not much of a choice at all. Uh, they tell her that if she does not do what they uh, demand her to do, that they will accuse her and everyone will believe them and not her. And uh, she ponders this and she prays and um, and she does not uh, consent. Um, she cries out to God in prayer, and then and she screams, and uh, the scene is interrupted. And while she is saved from what would occur, the rape uh, of these two men, of this woman, uh, they then accuse her, and it becomes even worse as her community uh, grieves this, and they uh, they believe the two men, 
they do not believe her. Um, the, uh, the two men accuse her of having laid with uh, another man and that, uh, that the man ran off. And so uh, the community believe them because they are the judges. They're put in this position of power and, um, and justice, the justice, the corrupted justice that they administer is that uh, she will be put to death. And as she is being paraded off uh, to be killed, uh, this young man, Daniel, speaks up in, um, in her defense. And he says, this is a daughter of Israel. The words are much more powerful than what I'll say. And this is not justice. And we need to return to the scene and, uh, and to hear her story, that she has a voice to share. And, um, and this is a perversion of justice in his eyes. And everything turns. Uh, the parade, uh, her execution parade is, uh, is turned and they go back to the compound. And Daniel has an idea about how to question these two judges separately. So power has shifted and this young man is given power to question them separately and ask them about details. And in that it is revealed that they are lying. And in fact, the consequence that they had put upon her is then put upon these two men as they're put to death. It is painful to ponder this. It's painful and yet it's part of our scriptures. It's part of the story of the people of God and the terrible things we do to each other um, and the ways in which the people of God try uh, well to intervene and to do justice. And we know in the world that we live in uh, that there are many, many, many times when justice is not done, when there is not um, an interruption of this, uh, this travesty and, and people are hurt terribly, terribly, terribly hurt. Sexual abuse and sexual violence are so prevalent in this world that we live in. We work to create structures within the church, within our schools, uh, within society at large, and yet um, the cycles of violence around this continue to be perpetuated. And there are moments when we break open the truth of this and uh, and uh, the painful reality of, uh, of the lust for power, um, uh, the, uh, the depravity and sinfulness that pushes people to do horrible things. And then uh, what often occurs is the way that institutions insulate that person, uh, those people, and protect them rather than those who are most hurt by this. The truth-telling around this uh, is, is such an important thing that we are called to do in the church. Um, there are so many ways that we can stand with those who have been victimized in this way. Um, we can question the systems, the institutions that perpetuate these injustices. And there are all sorts of ways that we can bring awareness to this, get training to identify this, to learn to identify um, these patterns of, uh, of violence uh, that occur to those that are most vulnerable, people of all ages, uh, people of all genders. Um, and, you know, I'm particularly struck by uh, one of our local community hospitals, GBMC, a place where many of you have probably been before, that they have, um, they have a sexual assault uh, program, a forensic examination program that is very, very unique in this country. Uh, it's, a, it's a great resource. Uh, it's something that uh, I'll include a link to in what I in the write-up around this, but the fact that it is so necessary because of the instances of abuse uh, and rape and violence, but also human trafficking. So uh, their efforts uh, in their forensic examination are meant to create a safe space for people that have been harmed to be able to share their story where they will be believed. Um, uh, and then that, that network also works to advocate and bring awareness around this. There are many other ways that uh, we can stand as people of faith against these, uh, these harms uh, to bring awareness to that. Um, but that's just one example, and I recently got a letter from the Episcopal chaplain at, uh, uh, at GBMC, Joe Hart, who is inviting us to really to ponder these issues and to support that work. So uh, I encourage you to read this book of Susanna. 
Um, I encourage you to ponder your own story, um, the things that you know in your life, because I know that as part of my story and my family, there are so many people that I know that have been hurt and how important it is to believe them, to journey with them and to bring about truth uh, uh, and justice in this manner. There are times when reconciliation isn't possible, but that, that is the hope that that people that have had power taken from them can find agency and voice, they can be believed. The story that we, are, we hear today in the book of Susanna is one, um, it's, it's retold in an imperfect way. Uh, we don't know a lot about this woman and her faith and her courage to cry out and to claim her voice. To um, uh, We hear of this hero, Daniel, but we don't really see how um, her faith, her crying out to God and her crying out for community uh, really interrupted this cycle of violence. The way that we tell these stories and we invite people into community around them is so important. And I'm grateful to be a part of a community here at St. Francis where we are learning to do justice, to love mercy and to walk humbly with God. Uh, whether, well, whatever, communities that we're a part of because these problems are not just in the wider world, they're not just in the church, but they're in the schools that we're a part of, in the, um, in the work environments that we participate in, in, uh, in scouting. Uh, they, they are in so many institutions and community structures, and it's important to name these and to work to bring about truth and justice, uh, to bring about love and mercy. So uh, I'm thankful that you're willing to listen if you've hung in there and um, please feel free to reach out if this is something you want to talk about, whether um, you have a story that you need to share, uh, your clergy here at St. Francis or people that you can trust and that are willing to journey with you around that. Um, you can also, of course, if something has happened to you, you can also reach out, reach out to resources beyond the church to be able to tell your story and um, to be able to receive the support you need. But we want to be here with you. We want you to know that you're not alone. So thanks for listening. Uh, Christ's peace be with you.